Okay, it is the October 1st turn of 1941 and Ghidorian's Blitzkrieg 2 combined with Case Blues, uh, full game scenario. So, the way a turn in operational combat series goes is first you roll for weather, um, but on the very first turn it's automatically uh, dry weather which is what that little weather sign is covering up, and flight is automatically allowed. So, um, aircraft are fully capable, and it's nice and dry out, meaning no uh, bad effects for weather. So, the very first, the way a turn structure works, the very first thing is the weather and stuff, then the first player does their full sequence, then the other player does theirs, the Germans go first, or Axis, sorry. Uh, and the very first thing they do is refit aircraft, though on this particular turn of the game, uh, none of the aircraft need refitting. So, because it's the very first turn, they're all readied. So we skip that step. The next part is rolling for reinforcements and replacements. And that'll be for all the Germans. Axis over here. And here, and there, and everywhere. Let's let's remind ourselves just how big this game is. We've got 16 maps out. Like seriously, that's how big things get. We're all the way up here. Okay, is that, is that showing at all, just how big this is? So for reinforcements, what we're going to do is roll in this little dice bowl up here. Um, what kind of reinforcements we get. There's also some listed reinforcements along with some horrible lighting glare. So, let's see what we get here. The very first thing is that on the Ghidorian Blitzkrieg 2 maps, which is everything past here, we get some of the 10th motorized infantry, which I have handily put in. And they are right here. We get these guys. Um, I'll probably put them over here in uh, Konotop because that they're close to the rest of their 10th motorized division buddies that way you can see that's their little marker right there and then on the enemy at the gates maps this the game's divided into three map types enemy at the gates case blue and Gadurian's blitzkrieg 2 enemy at the gates was a kind of like a prequel or a game they revamped in Case Blue. We're getting these guys in Enemy at the Gates, which will be the middle maps, essentially. And then in Case Blue, we get the green guys right here, the Roma Romanians, some German infantry, and uh, these Cossacks cavalry. So that should be fun. I'll set these guys up and roll reinforcements uh, and let you know what I get because cameras are too shaky. Okay, let's talk about some reinforcement phase that happened. Uh, so I brought in uh, the troops that I was given to essentially um, some entry hexes around here. The group that was coming into entry area in the Gadurian Splitscreen 2 maps. Uh, I dumped a lot off in here because um, they can just teleport into there. I think that kept the stacking limit just fine. Yeah. Um, as far as enemy at the gates maps, um, you can see uh, that and that, those troops are basically deployed here. Now the reason 
and I deployed these guys at the enemy at the gates maps um, all off the edge rather than teleporting them to their uh, better spots in uh, Potova I think and Potova there um, is because of stacking limits a uh, single hex can only have up to 10 unit, 10 regimental equivalents, which is like 10 normal unit size uh, units in it. And if you can see, that yellow 4 on that unit indicates that it is like 4 times the size of a regiment. So I actually put them on the edges of the map. Uh, and they'll be moving in upwards during the movement phase, which comes after reinforcements. And that'll be a hell of a turn. Okay, these little tile spacers here next to stuff indicates that there's supply points there. I added them in between the camera shots. So, um, I, so I got some supplies in this phase as well. Uh, I rolled dice on the supply table and I got... Um, 16 supply points when I uh, did all the table rolling. Um, it was uh, like an 8 of a roll and it was pretty good. So, I uh, got a pretty good supply line going. Um, also rolled on the reinforcements table. Uh, I have bad modifier on that, but I didn't get the worst roll I could have, but I only got one personnel replacement point, which uh, I can't really even use. But under... This tile space covered thing is a PAX unit. That is a personnel replacement. And he's going to run up. He's going to sit there actually until I can um, get an, another replacement troop. And then they're going to go to headquarters and replace whatever they can. The idea for him being there is that he can replace a this guy. Um, because personnel can replace infantry units. Come on. Um, but they can't replace tanks, which is like the rest of my freaking uh, dead pile of units. Uh, the game, like I said before, um, you, I start with um, some dead units in the um, uh, at the beginning of this playthrough or at the beginning of this scenario, and uh, the personnel could replace those dead units, but not in this case. So, what's next? Well, I get to do the big part of the turn, the mode determination and movement phase, where I get to choose, essentially, what side these pieces are on. Um, now, in most war games, the flip side of these pieces is like they've taken damage and they have one less uh, step of health, or uh, it would be like their hit point essentially uh, going down. But in this game, the flip side is their um, alternate mode of operation. Uh, this is their combat mode right here, and this is me fumbling. This is their movement mode. And it changes uh, essentially their stats around. And I'm going to do that, determine that for all these units, and then move them across the terrain. Um, in the mode determination phase, it's uh, partially movement, and also I can conduct overrun attacks, which is like attacking while moving. Um, normally, combats resolve in the combat phase, but that's for. Um, stationary combat. The mobile combat stuff is going to happen at the next part of the turn. And I might film a little bit of that. Um, I do have a lot of... Uh, I'm, I mean, like, I might station the camera and record, like, some of that combat. As it stands, though, um, that's mostly what I've set up. Oh, supply points. So supply points are have entered the field. I've kind of spaced out 16 supply points worth on the edges of the maps. And also um, in this space right here and this space, I think. And what I'm going to do is use the game's rail cap 
to transport supply points and like out off the map here and they're going to fly up and be spit out somewhere around here to reach uh, front lines up there that is allowed in this game that you can transport units via trains and uh, supply points are allowed as some of that transport I uh, also added supply points uh, here under this guy um, here and I added my Hungarian guys right here I added um, a Cossack somewhere I think I added him with the Romanians Are you here? Where are you? Aha, there he is. That was a reinforcement. And then added a bunch of supply points right here as well. Look at how tall that stack is. Seriously. That's it's because of all those supply points added. So we'll be doing a lot of truck moving and uh, unit moving, attacking, all of that fun stuff soon enough. Anyways, that's it for now.